I'd just like to thank you all for the honor and the privilege uh, to serve as your president. Um, we've had a very successful year under um, the leadership of Ms. Minimis, and um, I believe that in the past year, we have cultivated a trust um, and mutual respect um, and that I've grown to cherish, I've grown to appreciate. And I think that with this new trust and with the addition of our two new board members, I think we're in the perfect position to step away from the committee as a whole. And um, I'd like to uh, reinstate some committees that we already have in our bylaw. I'd like to reinstate the uh, personnel. This is Rogers. Oh. Um, as a point of order, we, we need to move on with nominations for vice president. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. One more action. All right then. Um, so I'll have the nominations now for vice president, please. I'd like, like to, to nominate Robin Steller. Steller. I'll second that nomination. <laughs> Take a roll call vote. Mrs. Caminiti? Yes. Mr. DeFranco? Yes. Mr. Donlin? Yes. Mr. Dimer? Yes. Mrs. Minuis? Yes. yes. Mrs. Rogers? Yes. Mrs. Stella? Yes. Mrs. Wright? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And then the last item that we have to address as an action item is the, the, the calendar. calendar. Right? Right? We need to work, work on the board calendar. Um, so I guess we can open that up to discussion. Um, Dr. George was nice enough to ask us all for our input and email us with everybody's um, conflicts. We did that already. Right? Well, we did it for agenda items. Oh, agenda only items. We can open it. At, I mean, we already did it for the agenda items. So. Well, it was on the agenda, okay. I guess. Um, does anyone want to comment on the calendar? <laughs> this is the board meeting calendar, just to be clear, too. It's not the school. It's yes. not the school calendar. Yes. Okay. okay. Board meeting calendar. Right. Um, I see on this calendar that there is no board meeting in December. Uh, oh, what was your name? You know, yes, I'll do that. It's nice to meet you. Then we have to turn it off. Okay. Sorry again? Yes. Okay. Sue Griffin, Middletown. Uh, congratulations, everybody. I'm looking forward to a wonderful year. Um, once again, I, uh, I'm up here about the calendar, and I see that there is no workshop meeting in December. Uh, this has been an issue in the past, uh, and we, we've addressed this numerous times could it perhaps be that you schedule a tentative meeting for December and then pull it if there is no um, reason to have it it's better to have it on the calendar and take it away than it is not to have it there uh, some things do creep up in December sometimes there is a reason uh, to have it, a workshop meeting uh, if things need to be discussed um, sometimes there are reasons there have been uh, last minute additions in the December meeting that um, have created animosity or hard feelings moving forward into the new year that can be eliminated by discussion. Uh, perhaps there's valid reasons to continue with the uh, workshop meeting in December and have it scheduled. And then you can always pull it away. But that would be my suggestion, uh, something for you to discuss and consider. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Anybody else? Okay, seeing no one else come to the mic, I'd like to move on to the next agenda item, which is the calendar. Um, so like I was saying, Dr. George had asked us all for our input, and um, what I noticed was that there are four of us who had conflicts on the, end, so the Tuesday night meetings, and I think a really easy fix would be just switch the Tuesday night meetings to Monday night meetings, um, either the second, third, or fourth Monday of the month. We just have to decide which one. Um, the second Monday of the month conflicts with our shared services meeting, but we could certainly ask for them to uh, reschedule. And the third Monday of the month are the township committee meetings. 
and if uh, a member of the public wants to go to both, that would be a little difficult for them. Well, I have to say Monday nights are not good for me. Okay. And just to add, just to add to that. Yeah, just, just to add to that, our meetings have been on Tuesdays and Wednesdays for many, many years. And everybody who ran for the board knew if they're coming to the meetings, everybody knew when the meetings are. To, to try to change them to Monday nights, it's just not fair to the rest of us. We all made our plans knowing that we were on the board, we were elected, these were the meeting dates. Of course, they get changed every once in a while. There's a few on Mondays and we have to change our plans, but that's not for every single month. It's just not fair to those of us that have uh, made our schedules for Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I understand what you're saying, but with that logic, then anyone who ran for board of ed would have to have Tuesday and Wednesday night free. And I would like to open it up to people who don't um, and take people into consideration and consider all of our schedules um, so that I can accommodate um, all the board members. The, the, only, the only thing that I would add is that we're just talking about the meeting schedules I think if we're going to keep a workshop voting meeting model then that the Tuesday meeting would have to work, work, we'd have to have one meeting the third week and one meeting the fourth week okay. the month. so um, because we really would have to have the workshop before the voting meeting if we're going to keep that model so whatever days you're looking at you know they need to flow that way okay so this has to be the third and the fourth <coughs> okay the other thing just uh, 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 kind of, uh, discussion I'm sure we can work with it. Uh, but if one of the two meetings was going to be on a Wednesday, the workshop meeting being on the Wednesday gives us as much time as possible to bring as much information to the board as possible. That's why I'm going to change Tuesday. Yeah, it has to be the Tuesday. Change when we get the budget calendar. I'm just saying that hasn't been finalized. Because we 
we've done that at nine o'clock in the morning sometimes. We have to run in and do something. I remember being in the uh, in the cafeteria. We got the board member. We have to make a vote. We have to get in. That was do it. I know it was before, yeah. but well, I'm, you have, I'm you have trying to, to explain. And you have to have a public to hearing when you vote on the budget too. Okay. So. I, I, just, I just want to point out too. The, the, the only time that we have money meeting month is you know those are the three shortest months of the year. For this year, for, right. example, for, for this year, for example, the month of December is very busy in schools as we all know, the holiday celebrations and all that. So, um, and for parents, having, just to be most transparent, having for December, November, April, having them focused on one night when they have to, uh, when, when we, we make an accommodation meeting of a voting meeting, and um, also an update just gives us the best chance to have most people. The parents, but I, I think the parents would choose to come to the voting meeting, workshop meeting, something that we need as a board. If we're having a, a new Understood. president, new vice president, the new president's bringing in new things to us, new ideas on how we're going to do it. I just think we need it. I think, and we can take it away. I'm all for saying cancel it. But I think if you don't put it down, you just don't have to. You, but I tell you this every year. You can go back to every day. I tell you, I say this every time because I really believe it's important. That's it. That's my okay. two cents. Okay. Maybe we can put in tentative dates for workshops in November, December, and then if we need to cancel them, we can cancel them. I just want to clarify something, Pam. I want to make sure I got what you said right. Okay. You're looking, you're looking to, it's okay to change the meeting dates for the people that want to run for the board in the future. And it's not the consideration of the people that are sitting here now. It's because it was four people. Are there four of us that have a problem with Monday nights? Or four or more? Are, are you one of them? I'm one of the people. So we've been having meetings on Tuesday and Wednesday for the whole last year. Yeah, yeah, and um, what I do is I, I just work out with my employer, right? Mm -hmm. But if I didn't have to, that would be great. And since there are three other people who also have, have an issue, that's the only reason I mentioned it was just me. But it's the, then it affects other people. Uh, I think that, <coughs> so I think at the end of the day, this is always going to be an issue with the volunteer organization, right? You know, I, you know, Mr. Little came in a little late. I've come in a little late at meetings. Yeah. You know, this is, there it goes. This is, this is always going to be, a problem. I think you know, we, we're we're a board of nine. Um, we all kind of know what we get into when we run. Um, you know, we all. I think. I think you mentioned in your little preamble before that you know, we we have we have tried to change the culture to be more inclusive and accommodating, and trusting of each other. So I think you know the way to move forward on this issue is to understand that. The, as a board of nine, the majority has to rule. There could be some flexibility. You know, I, I agree with Joan that you know our meetings have been on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and a lot of us have reconfigured our calendars. You know, I you know, I'm very famously have my carpool out there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we all have different you know pressures on our time. I think we'll, we'll, it wouldn't hurt to maybe nail down the first couple of meetings in January, come back and have a revised calendar, even if it's not, you know, if we move a couple Tuesdays to Mondays to be as accommodating as possible, I think that might be a fair compromise. Um, yeah. You know, to, and anything we can do to, to, to move this issue forward. I hate to see us hung up on this issue on reorganization night. I think it's, it's more important to, you know, try and find that compromise and, and, and get forward. Yeah, for me, um, the third Tuesdays of the month are uh, uh, direct conflict. Um, the first year was here, it was Tuesday, it was Wednesday, then Tuesday, and then it was Tuesday, Wednesday. The right. third week, the third week of the month, the Tuesdays, I have a direct conflict. So this year, I just had to just make sacrifices on the other end of it. But um, if they altered some of them, like you're saying, um, or all of them, <laughs> maybe better. Um, but uh, that was one. I was one of the people. The third Tuesday in particular. And I have a question. The Monday you're talking about is it the second? Is it the Monday? The two, we have the second Tuesday. Right. As exactly. our day. Are you mm -hmm. talking about the second Monday, the Monday right before that? Exactly. I'm saying that we would have to decide as a as as okay. a what do we want the second Tuesday or the third Tuesday, fourth Tuesday? What is it? It's the third Tuesday. Oh, the third Tuesday. Okay, I'm just looking at the two Monday. Third Tuesday and the fourth Wednesday. So and the uh, third Monday is no good for you, John? Yeah, no. So now what about back?
back to the Wednesday, Wednesday idea? Um, I, can't, I definitely can't do Wednesdays. Okay. I, I'm booked on that Wednesday right after the workshop. I have meetings okay. on that Wednesday. So I was just, just looking at my calendar, so that's what I'm trying to look. So you're really? talking about the first Monday or the third Monday? I think Amy just said it has to be the third Monday. Right? No, it has to be the first Monday. I didn't say what day of the week. I'm just saying if you're going to keep the workshop voting, then obviously the workshop is generally the third week of the month and the voting is the fourth. And the reason we do the workshop the third week is because then we have enough time in the month to get financial information together and other things that we need. If we have the meetings too early in the month, we don't have enough to really right. present to the board. Right. And that was that was mine. Yes. Yes. So we generally have been doing third week of the month, fourth week of the month, whatever day. What do you mean? But it could be the third Monday. Monday. I'm just, I'm saying all of us. I'm trying to be flexible. Can it be the fourth Monday for workshops? But then if it's the fourth Monday, we don't always have five weeks, so we don't have another week to have the voting meeting. Uh, can I make a suggestion? Maybe, as Nick had suggested, we nail down the next two meetings and then table it and come up, you know, after talking in executive session next month and come okay. up with a revised calendar. Okay. Is that, is that fair? Um, so we can do the third Monday for the next two? The only problem with that is by law you have to publish your annual um, meeting list. Um, can, can, can the, can the meeting list be published? It can be revised, but you've got to publish something. Okay. Oh, I understood that we can do just the first one to advertise separately for just that first meeting and then go into executive session another time. Yeah, we can keep the regular calendar. No, so it's not an executive session topic. Two. I got you. I'm sorry. We could change the first two months. We could change January and February. Keep those calendars the way it is for the rest. And oh, I thought it did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Change the first two months, January and February. Keep the calendar the way it is for the rest. And next month, come back and revisit the calendar again. Now we're publishing the calendar that we're going to change. And what about the public? Of course, we've already seen that. It's confusing for us. Don't you think it's going to be confusing? You have to be very vigilant about sending out notices about any revisions that you make to the calendar. When do we have to have the calendar outline? Yeah, Kim, what is the deadline? What's the deadline for that? For the schedule. Is it 7 It's 7 of January? Let me let me do some checking and I'll get back to you before the end of the meeting. Okay, because we can go into executive session. We have it on the uh, agenda anyway. Not but not for that topic. Um, That's not a topic for executive session. So just so you know, the third Monday of January is March the day and school closed. So there's your first conflict. Yeah. And the fourth Monday, did we already discuss this and I lost it? What, what's wrong with the fourth Monday of January? Well, that would have to be the voting meeting. into a board of ed <laughs> public debate and then um, and then we can come to a consensus but but as Kim said we have to do it in public so we you know let's just you know move forward Okay, I already did. Okay, go ahead. Okay, February. Let's look at February. You're going to have to do it in February. 
have a problem though in February too because it is it that that was the problem so January and February are so January and February we leave status quo let's look at March you want to look at March only has four weeks so you can't go to you want the third Monday you say right it would be the third Monday no you can't make it third Monday because third Monday is not good for right. job Keep in mind, I think one of the, one of the goals was to one of the goals was to not conflict with township meetings as well. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to give up one of our. Uh, we, we, you know what? We want to be you, you want to be compliant with the township committee, but you want to move our meetings on Mondays too. It, it's not, you know it, it's it's too much. We're either looking for the board of ed meeting dates and we're looking for the Middletown Township Committee and the Board of Education date. Okay. Which when honestly I, thinking, I think our first priority should be the Board absolutely. of Education. Absolutely. But when I was thinking of it I thought it was going to be pretty simple to move uh, to one of the Mondays, the second, third, or fourth. If all of those are going to be an issue for a majority of the board members, um, then that's then that's an issue. But if it's only um, an issue for one or two and they think they can maybe change their schedule, that's a different thing. So um, what I'm confused about here is, is there a problem with the second Monday of every month for the majority of us? Second. The second, second Monday. Monday. Oh. Okay. That's about that. I'll ask you about the second Monday. Are we looking in February? Are we looking in January? Will we start? Sorry, yes. So it will be the 14th of January. Of January. The 14th of January. I mean, we, we can do new workshops the second week. We just will not have as much information as we would in the third week. More pro mostly personnel and financial. We're, we'll have when you, if, I mean, you can do that. But that's explaining to the board that they're, I'm sorry? Well, we, I mean, it, yes, it can go on the, but, you know, we use the workshop meetings to explain things and walk through things, so we just would have probably more items that may fall in between the two meetings that we wouldn't have a chance to do that at the workshop. But as long as the board understands that, okay. would that would that be covered off potentially also by what Pam had suggested as we have stronger committees, so a lot of that would be handled in the committee? Maybe. Depending on when those meetings were scheduled, obviously, right? Possibly. Potentially. So we have the second Monday of January is okay for everybody. The second Monday of February is okay for everybody. Let's, 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 yeah, let's, let's use the dates as we go through. That's the yeah. January. January 14th. I'm sorry, back to January. January 14th is okay. The second Monday. Mm -hmm. You want to You'll say it. I think, I think then what's happening is that if you bring this workshop in on that one week, and then you're not going to have a voting meeting for two more weeks. No, then, then there's going to be information that, that the district has to compile for that workshop. Then there's going to be brand new information that gets compiled for the next meeting. And both meetings are going to end up turning into workshops. So if you're going to have the workshop on that Monday, then put the voting meeting the following Wednesday. And this way now our meetings are just earlier in the month. Okay, that's all they are. All we do is move. Well, that's fine. Wait a minute. No, no, it's not fine. Amy, the bill is. Will it be ready if we go up or we go up? Are you talking about doing the voting meeting in, in the, like for January, would it be the 16th or the 23rd? Sound, January really so it sounds effective. like it sounds like January is not. I'm sorry, Lina. so I think that January is not effective. February we would go 11th then 20th, so that no. would. Second week or third week? Second week. Second week. We're looking at second week. 11th and 20th. March, it would be the again the 11th and 20th, which I think we all figured out. Um, April, you now April's an early month, so now you're talking about the 8th and the 17th. You can't make voting meetings. When you move those more voting meetings, I am going to be here. Mrs. Cavanaugh, you need to turn your mic on. Everyone who's talking needs to turn their mic on. I can't make. When you move that week up, the voting week, I already have voting other meetings that I'm committed to on that Wednesday. When you move that week up, I'm sorry. Okay. But this is how we got to this point tonight. No, because yeah. you're <laughs> only moving the 
workshop meeting. Now you talked about the voting meeting and yeah. moving that up. So, so let's, let's focus back on the voting. Or let's let's focus, yeah, let's focus back on the workshop. So we got ourselves to April, right? And we said that everybody's okay with the second. No, we're yeah. not okay. I, I was, yeah. You lost me as soon as you went to the voting meeting. Okay, let's go back to the workshop meeting then. Workshop okay. meeting I can do. Okay. okay. Voting meeting you lost me. Okay, so the workshop meeting is okay for January the 14th. It's okay for February the 11th. It's okay for March the 11th. Okay, it's okay for April the 8th. I just want to go on record, Dan. It's not okay for me. Yes, and April. I have to tell you, it's not okay for me. And April the 8th is April the 8th is way too early. It's, yeah, April's a very early month. April's a five-week month, I think. So, yeah. You know, April the 8th is very early. So. Yeah, I don't know that we can make a decision tonight. You know, okay. I'm, I'm yeah, trying. I'm trying. I know you're like going to be able to do it. Um, yeah, let's just. Um, what we can do is uh, we can. So um, we can't change the first meeting to uh, the second Monday or the third Monday um, or the fourth Monday in January. If you're like, uh, the only thing I'm saying is if you're having a workshop and a voting, the workshop will come first. So the second meeting of the month would be the voting. Yeah. Right. Whatever, whatever uh, dates so you're too late. It's too late right. in the month to do that. Right. Just, so I think we have to just keep the first meeting the way it is and take it from there and discuss this um, further. Uh, and the other, the other, and the other thing is, I think this does bear more discussion. I think, you know, me personally, I, I could use a couple weeks to, to think about it. Yeah, but sure. again, going back to something you said earlier, if you are, if we if we determine that we're serious about strengthening the committees, then we should determine: do we want to have two two meetings, right, every month? Maybe we do one meeting a month, two meetings a month. We do some sort of alternation. But you know, if we move away from the committee as a whole, right. then the need for the workshop is diminished. That's not true, though. But, but they can do that in a workshop voting meeting, so we would have a longer meeting. Could we just? Back, we do I'm, not, I'm, 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 I'm definitely not. I, I, just a point. I'm not saying it. I'm certainly not order. saying it's ideal. But so, that every, so because you have the question, so the Open Public Meeting Act says that you must publish your uh, annual schedule by January 10th or within seven days of your annual reorganization meeting whichever is later so it's it's 10th that's okay whichever is later january 10th or within seven days of the end seven calendar days because today it just says seven so days that not typically seven calendar days unless it says school days it doesn't right so we have to make a decision by the 10th and it has to be set and published. And this is the only time it has to be board approved, correct? So you need to take action on it. Tonight? Yes, unless you're having another meeting. Okay. Just for the calendar. So our options are to have uh, one meeting that is um, Committee of the Whole and Workshop on the Wednesday dates that we already have or keep the calendar the same, is what I'm hearing. So, I, mean, I think you have other options, you just have to But not, because the other board members can't make it. Could we do that? Could we have one meeting month that's, that and keep these Wednesday dates at that meeting and it's committee of the whole or, um, workshop slash um, voting? Because we're not going to have committee of the whole anymore. We're going to see all the new committees. So, so, uh, have we have we voted on that yet? No, we haven't voted. Yet. Yet. No, but it's, it's, that's where we're going. But even but even with not yeah, having the committee of the whole, there always was a workshop, and there always was there's always something to discuss. And the workshop, to me, with the discussions, is being transparent to the public. They get to hear what the committees have to say. We get to hear. We get to ask questions. When you combine it all in one to a workshop slash voting meeting. You're losing it. It's almost like you're cutting the information away from everybody. I don't mean any disrespect to new ideas, but to me, that's what makes us less educated in what we're sitting up here doing. Kim, I just have one question. Can we adopt the budget the way it is and on uh, the calendar and make changes to yes, it? Yes, you can. Ask, absolutely. absolutely. So absolutely. we can vote on it the way it is and that's then 
have another meeting and then publicize changes to the yes to the yes. I, I really think that's the way to go. I'd like to. I'd like, like to make a motion to adopt the meeting schedule as published in the agenda. I'll second that. So, so what you're voting on right now is the schedule as presented. Correct. With possible change in the agenda. All right. And I'm saying, okay, so I'll, if there's going to be change, so I'm going to vote again. I can't make any of those workshops pretty much. So What's that? I won't be able to make some of those workshops. I'm just pointing that out the way it's currently scheduled. So. Yeah, the way it's currently okay. scheduled. Yeah. yeah, okay, so that's fine. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? And we're not going to go to executive session? We don't have an executive no. session agenda, so those were all the action items, so the rest of the meeting would just be done. Okay. All right, so um, I just wanted to finish what I was saying before, um, that we um, are in a position where we can move away from the committee to whole, I believe. Um, and um, I wanted to reinstate the personnel, the policy, and the legislative committees. <clears throat> and they're already in our bylaws, but just to reinstate them. Um, I'm also hoping to start um, the process of adding a strategic planning committee, um, which we will be needing to tackle our enrollment challenges. Um, and I would like to combine the facility and finance meetings um, with the same purpose. And um, I hope that you will all support me in creating um, an adopt-a-school program. Uh, where each board member is responsible for going to the events at their school or schools because we have such a big district that they've adopted and that's not to um, discourage those of you who go to everything already that's wonderful but um, just so that we can divide and conquer and have more of our faces out there um, and what's that I'll say? Um, I'm hoping to have a weekly meeting with Dr. George so we can catch me up on what's going on in the district and um, during those meetings, that's where we'll be writing the agendas for these meetings. So um, I'll be reaching out to you all for your input um, into the agenda, what you would like to put on the agenda. But that being said, at any time you ever need to call me with any comments, questions, concerns, email me. I'm always open. Um, you know, I'm always open to listening to all of you, obviously. Um, and I would like to work closely with all eight of you. Um, I'm very aware that you're volunteers. I'm very grateful for you volunteering your time. So I'll do my best to run the meetings as efficiently as possible. Um, probably a lot better than tonight's uh, calendar schedule. <laughs> Hopefully. But uh, yeah, and that's all I had to say. Um, I guess if there's any more discussion. Yeah, I do have a question. One of our goals is to open up the strategic plan. So before you start that committee, we as a board need to vote to open up that strategic plan. Okay. We've been trying to do that for a couple months and we can't get everybody on board. But before you start that committee, we have to as a board agree, we're gonna open up that strategic plan. So would that, so John, would that mean that we would wanna put the strategic plan on the agenda for the next workshop meeting? Yes. Right. So okay, great. I and then that. find find out how we want to do it, who we want to do our strategic plan for us. Because there's no point having a committee without the agreement to open it up. That would be great. That's and I'll the be, first yeah. step. And I'll send you all an email so you can tell me what committees you'd like to be on, what you'd like to chair, even if it's something you're already doing, just so I know. So one so one thing I just I just want to add, I think that this past year, it's my first year on it, so but I know. we I know you do. And bless you. And one thing that I thought we got better at as the year went on was the committee reports. I think that Mrs. Stella did a fantastic job with the curriculum committee report. I paid attention. And I think I think that the I think that the danger that, that Joan brought up about moving to committees and away from the committee of the whole is mitigated by having very strong committee reports. It's just what I want to just get out there is, is in your role as president 
you know, to, to be mindful of the, the quality of the committee reports, to be up on those committee reports, because I think that you take a lot on yourself as the president when we move to committees, because you have to oversee all of that. So just, you know, as we move forward, I agree with committees. I think the committees are the way to go. We get a lot done in committee meetings. We, Amy runs a very good facilities and finance committee meeting. I think we had, you know, tackle a lot of topics and shared services I thought was very successful this year. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, if we're going to increasingly rely on committees, then we have to make sure that what gets discussed in committee is appropriately communicated out to the public. So like Joan said, we don't lose that transparency you get from the committee as a whole. Absolutely. Yeah, that, I, that also helps keep the board in the loop because we need to be part of, you guys are having the discussions. I'm all in favor of committees. I always have been. But the board needs to be kept in the loop on what goes on in those committees so that you know, when we come to a vote, you don't have any questions of why we're voting no. We, we should be well educated on what's going on. Like when you guys do the shared service, and I've said that about Robin's committee too, a lot of detail comes out. Nobody can walk out of here saying they don't know what happened at those meetings. And that's what, when we go on with more committees, we need to know that. And that's why I feel the workshop is important because there are some things that are gonna be on our voting agenda from those committee meetings that we really need to have a discussion on because maybe some of us have a different feeling. You know, and we can work it out before the vote comes. Yeah, I trust you all uh, to be good committee heads and to give a thorough um, report. And that is from my experience of a whole year and listening to all the reports, I thought they've been very thorough from the chairs. My, my, um, my concern is that um, in terms of, you know, what is the goal, for example, um, you know, I think committees are good if there's a purpose to it. Um, I think that with the committees, depending where you are on the board and what you're involved in, I, I do think that the, the um, I know it's in the bylaws, but I think it'd be the bylaws should, should make sure they're very specific of what happens in those committees. I think the board has to, should approve the agendas. I don't think we should have reports. So I think there should be minutes to them. Um, I also think there should be public participation, like for example, like a district like Howell does. Um, you know, maybe some of them you can't. Um, but I would say that um, including the public on those would, would tail into strategic planning because a lot of those topics become strategic planning topics like curriculum and all these things. And I think what happens is then you have the five years to be strategic planning. You come in there and you're talking curriculum, but it's already baked in the cake. I mean, we've already gone down a path, and it's very hard to believe that the district's going to turn around just because, you know, some people, we went to a, a meeting and they showed us a bunch of things. So. I, I think that we have to be very careful in terms of setting the agendas. I think conversations happen that when there's board members together and there's with the administration, I think there's a lot of things that go on and you have to kind of catch up. It's a lot of catching up for everybody else. I have that, I have that concern. And also about some of the committees like personnel, I'm not quite sure, you know, if I was an employee of the district, I would be a little bit wary of that where I don't think you have to rice notice people about when you discuss them in those, in those meetings. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I feel like some of those things are, you know, what is our role? We, we set the policy for hiring. We set the policies for reviews. I'm not sure what else we need to delve into for personnel that a committee would require. I mean, we don't do an executive session. I believe the personnel section should be part of our closed session. It should not be with the board member committee. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I wonder about that. I mean, I'd be worried as an employee what they're talking about. We, we should be hearing everything. People do need to be nice to rights, right? But, but we should be hearing everything because there's going to be something that gets by. Mr. Nolan, if you could turn your mic on. The little red light's on. <laughs> so can you shut it off in there? I mean, just delete people. All right. Right. Now, what I'm saying is that the personnel, I would like to see the personnel meeting be held in our executive session. I don't, I don't believe that a person, a four committee member team can go in there and actively bring us back the information that has happened and transpired as we have with our personnel calls. I think we all need to hear it. So, as you know, if any time you're going to talk about um, personnel, you have to give them rice notice. So it's fine. That, that is, that, is that only when you're going to have a vote, or is that now if you have a any time. discussion about any personnel, you have to give them right That's even a personnel committee, which, which allows them uh, to decide if they want to have this discussion in the public. Excuse me, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Sure. You have to write notice if we're if we're the whole, but if we're committee of four, correct? No. 
Activate overall. Correct. No, I, I just said that, right? No, because the four means you're not in a vote. You're not in a voting you're setting, not so able you to don't take action as a committee. But if you're a committee of the whole, that changes things. Yeah. No, I understand that. Okay. I'm just saying it, it to me. It sounds like a potential gossip mill versus something a, a, a legitimate purpose for the board. Yeah. The administration does the hiring. They give us the personnel. They talk about it. They give us you know folks. They hire. They give resumes. You can. They talk about you know obviously private things in that concession. I I, I get concerned that we go too far. Um, on top of that, also the number of committees, it, it's going to become a tremendous <laughs> churn. Um, and it's just a matter of how often, and again, setting the agendas, what's the purpose. It, so the, all the board can say, listen, this is what you're going to talk about and why. Because sometimes I find it hard to see where a four person committee really does anything different than the administration would do for us on a committee call. I'm, and I'm not saying everything. I, I believe that some of them should be definitely committees because there's definitely things the board in terms of our strategic vision needs to sort of work on but in terms of all of them I, I feel it's a lot um, that's just my opinion yeah, I, I, I second what, what John and Mike have said about the personnel committee I feel very uncomfortable about having a separate personnel committee I think that we are well served by uh, Mrs. Pekus and, and, and Mrs. Walker um, in our executive session I would want to maintain that so there's three of you who think that it, uh, anyone else want to speak on the personnel committee or against? Well, I just want everybody to understand that when it comes to race notices, if it's new hires, we don't have to race them because they're not right. employed yet. Right. right. So a lot of the stuff that we get before us in the committee of the whole is people that are just coming on board. And from my experience, when we're talking about people that are already employed for us, there's a, in a situation that Dr. George would um, fill us in on that we would know it and obviously that person would get raced um, so I believe also most school districts around here that follow the committee model do have a personnel committee I'm not invested so much in the idea that we have to have a personnel committee but it is commonplace I believe that most school districts have it and a lot of it um, I believe it's it's not so much gossip <laughs> as it is talking even about staffing needs in personnel um, and, and, right and, and it really the, the person who's chairing the committee is really the one who should be guiding and making sure that it doesn't turn into a gossip mill that you're really talking about staffing needs and not individuals it should be positions and not individuals now if you only have one person in that position then everybody knows who you're talking about but it really should be about positions and not individuals right I think, I think that mrs mingo used to make a good point that you know through the other committees so for example if there's a need in the facilities area we probably have that discussion through the facilities if there's a need you know on the teaching side that might be a discussion that would happen in the curriculum so you know I, I john brought up a very good point which is that as a volunteer group you know again big believer committees but as a volunteer group you know every committee meeting is an extra meeting um I don't know if you heard the scheduling meetings with this group is a little tough. <laughs> and so no, we I have the opposite experience. Since we've gone to the committee model, I feel like our, our meetings here can be a bit shorter because we don't have the long presentations. That's, that's, so that's the payoff, right? Yeah. But I, all, all I'm saying is that I'm in, I'm in agreement with the, with the principle of the committees. Right. What I think we should do is be judicious about which committees we choose to staff. We can acknowledge that the bylaws have uh, allocated out a personnel committee, but it can be your discretion or the board's discretion that it is not, you know, staffed at, at any particular time. And if there is a need to pull the personnel committee together, we pull the personnel committee together. And again, I would I would like to talk about how the committees come back to the board, right? E even though they're they're subcommittees of the larger of the larger board, um, I know they have in the bylaws what their purpose is but I feel like the agendas need to be known a little bit more I think some of the presentations in there the public has to see those and I think the rest of the board has to see them too so I think where some of the issues in the past that could be wrong were you know the, 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 the committees might do a lot of good stuff but other people need to catch up and sometimes you have to show the same information so the other board members I mean, just from looking at when the board is doing that that's what really came down to it wasn't anything other than it wasn't about trust necessarily but it was about well if you're telling me something you're kind of giving me secondhand information I didn't get the same presentation and I think it depends on the topic but I think that the agendas the materials 
and I think there should be minutes should be posted. And I also think we should consider for some of these committees having people from the public. I think Howell does a, I think Howell, I think it was Howell does that. Um, and they thought it was very successful, because what happens too is then you find people, not that we don't want to be on the board, but people that want to be on the board later on, um, you know, they're, they're part of the process and they're involved. And, and, and then the public can say, well, I've picked, I've got workshop meetings, I've got voting meetings, and also too, certain committees, at least some of the meetings have public, maybe not all of them. In other words, you might have to say, I'll make it up, finance committee, maybe one's just board, the other month's like board and public. I, I, I would highly encourage that. Just project. I just want to make. I hear what you're saying. You're talking from experience. Kids from experience. They want to try something new. You got to give them the benefit of the doubt. And I think we're going to, you know, because you say about the committees and everything, we got to give her a chance and let it and see how it works out. We'll tweak it. No, That's I, it. I, 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 I don't mind giving giving a chance. I'm just saying that I want to know what the topics are. I want to be able to see minutes. So when we come to the workshop, it's not like me getting a download all of a sudden with everybody else. It's like, okay, I know what they're talking about. I know they're they're trying to. There's this little thing they're trying to tweak because we didn't get agendas last time. Right, but that was a different board. It was different. Was that yeah, but I'm just bringing it up. Right? Share the agenda. Yeah, I think that, yeah, people should people should just add something in there and say, listen, by the way, if I have a facilities committee, you know, can you guys talk about this or kind of throw this into the or the president, right? And say, listen, can this be part like of the Like Robin agenda? does with the curriculum. Yeah, she it's says, been done. Robin is excellent. Oh, yeah. oh go Robin, on. No. And you know what? Um, you are. So, so, so I always notify, right? Yeah. I always, first of all, if anyone from the public ever emails me and asks a, a question about curriculum, it's always something I bring up at committee. And then I also reach out to all the board members and say, do you have any questions or anyone spoke to you and you want me to bring something up? Um, as far as the agenda, I mean, we do have an agenda for every meeting. Um, I don't know, I, I guess we could bring them to the board meetings. If well, I think the board should approve them or look at them or say that. I'm, say, I'm saying it, but well, if you're doing a committee for the board and you're representing the board, the rest of the board should know before you walk into those meetings. I don't think we should approve them. I think we should know about them, but I don't think we have to approve them because really the agenda is set by kids. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And she has to talk no. about what I'm, what I'm, that's, that's true, but I, okay, maybe I can see it in advance then. Well, again, yes, you can see it in advance. So, because my point is if it's something that Kim needs to get voted on, she's going to need all nine people. So, okay. so we have so we have the board portal, yeah. right? And I think so, this kind of goes back to what I had said earlier. I think it's, it's Pam's responsibility to stay on top of the, the chairs of the committees to keep the board portal updated. Mm -hmm. And then it is the responsibility of the individual board members to go and look at the board portal to say, okay, Curriculum's meeting this week. Here's what's on the agenda. I, I don't. I don't agree with you that, that we should be approving what's on Robin and Kim's agenda. But I do think that Robin does a good job. I think that on shared services, we did a nice job of soliciting, um, you know, uh, input. And, and I think we should continue that. And I would look to our new president to sort of keep us committee chairs in line. Yeah. My only point is that the committee should act on behalf of the power. Yeah. So you can't do that if I don't know what you're talking. About. So, and I think that it's, it's, it's not as dramatic as, as maybe I made it sound, but for shared service, you, you kind of did that, sort of, we did, you know, but it was sort of like, okay, well, that's an important committee. Um, the board, you know, should talk about what are we talking about, similar to what we do for, similar to what we do for uh, negotiations, right? Right, we can share with the whole board and ask for your input before we go into right. the board. Or we might disagree that certain it's something's on top of It's a little more work for myself and the chairs, but we can do it. I Committees are a lot of work. So then yes. not a little bit. For the, for the committee, so like, Ro like Robin's committee, when she's giving her report, she's reading off a minute. So it's not going to be that big of a deal to take those minutes and put them online and give them to you. It could be done. That's how it always was done in the past. Every chair um, sent out the minutes before the workshop meeting so that everybody had a chance to review. And then that sparks the conversation of what went on in those committees also. So really, it's something that's being done, but we're just not sending the minutes out. Right, because if you think about it, you read off your minutes, I read off my minutes, Nick reads off his. Right, and sometimes, in terms of an agenda, sometimes Mrs. Pekus and I kind of come up with the agenda a day or so before based on the input I get from the board members and from the public and new things that she might want to bring up. So it's kind of hard to have them so far in advance and then approve them 
you know, we'd have to plan it out so far in advance a month before. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think we could be, you know, make it more public and put absolutely. it on, put it on, on the, the website. Absolutely, put it on the website. Absolutely, I think it's a great idea. And, and let's not, I mean, not to belabor the topic, but there's nothing stopping me from contacting Robin and saying, hey, curriculum, could you talk about blah? Or, right. You know, stopping John from Anytime. saying, yeah. from, you know, calling out to, to, to me and saying, hey, shared services, let's talk about flag football or something like that. So, you know, we could, yeah. yeah, the only thing to remember is if I send you an email with all nine and you don't reply all with any pertinent information, it's okay to just reply all thank you, but um, that's about it. Uh, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> As per the Open all. Public Records Act, the Sunshine Law. Anything else? All right. So, okay. so just to, I'm sorry, just for closure on this topic, will we see a list of committees on the agenda? at the next meeting. I'm going to send you all an email Tell me which committees you want to be on, even though I have an idea because you've already done it for a year. Are you going to send us a list of, I'm trying to write down what your committees that you put up. Yes, I'm going to write them all down. I'm going to ask, yes, yeah. right, what would you like to be a part of? Um, you just read that one if you'd like to share. Okay, so the ones to add are <clears throat> the personnel, um, the policy and the legislative. The personnel, uh, we talked about having on there um, what we may or may not need it depending on if the topics are related to other committees that we can just get them done in those committees because a couple of the board members have concerns. I don't know if everybody's in agreement on that. Oh, I don't think well, we'll taking any I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for personnel, so I don't know. One, two, three are not for personnel. Yeah, but, I, but I think what Leonora is saying the same thing. She's saying it differently. She's saying that personnel, I think, was brought up by, by That's my fear. You can take it a vote. Could go, could say go no into the be part of yeah. I'm sorry, but any weeks. of you who are speaking, you really do have to turn the mic off. It just it doesn't show up on the tape. Right. Mike, why don't you clarify? Why you have a concern. Please clarify. I would just like to see personnel done as a committee of the whole. That's it. That, I, I like that idea that we all are involved in understanding what decisions you're looking at and not getting that back at, at another meeting by four people who went to attend. That's all. I second it. I'm on the record. I'm on that. I'm for that as well. I agree with Mr. Donnelly. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So the other no person, no person, sorry. Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, and so the policy and the legislative committee. Financial facilities. Financial facilities. And get legislative. Are, is, are policy and legislative together? No. Or not? No. no. I, I've talked to Mrs. Rogers about creating a legislative liaison committee, so to speak. Okay. That would be something I would be very interested in being a part of. No, just it not yeah. 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 Well, what I was going to say is not just because we now have a preponderance of lawyers <laughs> on the board, but um, it might be a, it might be a, a good opportunity again because we are all challenged for time. That if there's not going to be something happening in the legislative every month there's not going to be something happening in the policy every month maybe that committee does get merged because i feel like the committees would be very similar in, in staffing so just a consideration just yeah. well noted but i can assure you as i've been following this that there is something that touches upon education almost weekly down the track we, we we need the help down there so yes we do i'm not i'm not pooing the, the, the committee I'm just saying that maybe that's one committee, legislative and policy. Committee. I'd like to make a suggestion to that. If you're going to uh, chair that, that's great. I would like to see the legislative committee come up with a way to bring somebody into Middletown and help teach our parents how to go out and lobby for what we need because they are so willing, they just don't know how to start. And Dr. George and I talked about that through the Garden State Coalition, but if you could bring somebody in to work with our parents, and teach them how to go out and help us fight for what we need. I think that's that's going to be a great step. Right. An excellent suggestion. One of the other thing, one thing I'd like to suggest is uh, New Jersey School Boards has a committee structure, and they have sample charges for each committee, 
and maybe what you could do is take a look at that and see if that's helpful you know every committee has a charge you know what what you're supposed to be doing <coughs> to help keep you in the guidelines so that you're not venturing off into areas that you shouldn't so I recommend that to you and that's offered that's free you can just call your um, field, field service rep and get a copy of those charges and at least then each committee has it and you can uh, you can amend it but at least it gives you a foundation from which to start The idea that finance and facility would be merged, then it's yeah. just one yeah. instead of several. Oh, okay. And then we still have student services, curriculum, shared services that were already in committees. Yes. yes. And the strategic planning. Um, eventually, eventually, eventually. Yeah. 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 I think that becomes an ad hoc committee once we determine the open. And the negotiations. Right. Right. When we're in the negotiations. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So how many is that? 38, 42. <laughs> <laughs> happy nights? 35, 6, 7. Well, as was stated, each committee may not necessarily have to meet every month. And also, can they meet uh, over the phone, via a phone call for any of these committees? No? No conference call? Why would you have a committee if you didn't do it over the phone? Well, I'm thinking like a policy committee. Uh, to people reading through policies, might be able to just call each other and say. I think that's. I feel like that's probably left to the chair and their committee members. Yeah. How they. Yes. Yeah. How they meet is up to them. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I know for curriculum we meet maybe six to every six to eight weeks. It's not once a month. So it's yeah. you know as the needs arise. Good point. Finance, finance and facilities. We try and choose a different school to meet at. So it's you know every every committee's got their needs. Some might be quarterly, yeah. some might be monthly. I, I, think your, I think your list is good. All right, guys, I'm excited. This is going to be fun. <laughs> I just want to clarify because we don't have established the Shared Services Committee yet. We do not have a date established for January, so I just want the board to be clear with that. It's not as we didn't have a standing date because on either side, the representatives had not been determined, so I just wanted that expectation okay. to be that we have to still set a date. When do you need from me the list of the committees with everybody who's on them? Well, whenever you have it ready, then okay. we'll just have to contact the township and then we'll have to coordinate with them. Okay. But I just didn't want you to feel like there was something set up for January already because there's not. Okay. Making sure that. you have enough time to communicate with all the board members. It takes a little bit of time to yes. get the committee structure together. I do have a question. Can you confirm that the uh, members of the negotiation committee that are presently negotiating will continue? The negotiations are done. Yes, that is what I would Thank like you. to happen. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I have one further question for Kim, if I may. I did raise this at the last public meeting. Um, there, uh, the township committee is now floating the idea of having the board of education elections in April as opposed to November. You were going to look into that. We were concerned about who was going to adopt the resolution first. Is it the is it the first one in that wins? Pretty much. Okay. So Pretty much. And there, <clears throat> there's one district that I found where the um, the township decided that they wanted to change it. The school board did not want to change it. But so far, they have not appealed. Okay. Because there's no real appeal, clear appeal process. So that is something I would suggest that we give due consideration to and with some speed, if I may because I do think the Township Committee is moving in that direction, having the Board of Education elections in April as opposed to November. Now, and we talked about voter turnout. Now what happens if, Kim, I guess this is a question for you, if we resolve as a board at our voting meeting, uh, what, what's, what's the doomsday date? I can't recall. We have 10 days from today. No, that's the calendar. That's the calendar. It was January. There was a certain date. It has to be, I think, 80 days before the election. Yes. So I think it was January. It's late January. We, we cited the date last yeah, month. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. It All right, is so in anyway. January, though. It's so if we resolve this board that we want to continue having our elections in November, and then the 
Township Committee subsequently passed this resolution, moving us to April. Their resolution cancels out our resolution? It's the first, it's my understanding is the first one in, the first, the, the group that gets it in first. So we need to get our resolution in ASAP, right? Okay. The, the, I have the information from the last meeting that it's, it's the 85th day prior to the third Tuesday in April. That would be January 21st. So that would be the deadline to have a resolution to change it to April for this year. So we have a workshop meeting. So we have a workshop meeting on the 15th and a voting meeting on the 23rd, which is two days. So do we need to do anything with our agenda on the 15th to make it a special voting meeting? You could make it a special voting meeting and take action mm -hmm. if that's what the board wanted. Absolutely. Do you want to vote? Is that what the board wants? Well, all in favor? No, so so the motion. Yeah, so so <laughs> I so I so then I would move that we amend the workshop meeting on the fifteenth, create a special voting meeting, and add to the agenda a resolution that the Middletown Township Board of Education elections continue to be held in November with the general election. And that we also direct and that we also, also direct council to prepare that draft resolution in advance for our review. Yes. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Abstentions. I'm abstaining. We don't really need to. We don't need to go on any of the agenda. Right. We don't need to go on any of the special voting meeting. Okay. Is there anything else? Um, I need a motion to adjourn this meeting. Some Second. Wait, public comment? Is there a public comment? Yeah. Okay. Number 10. Oh, we did it. That was for the agenda items. Okay. Public comment, sorry. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Uh, Rachel Kanopka. I just had a couple of things based on what was discussed tonight. I just wanted to share some opinions. As it relates to the meeting schedule, I know the Township Committee workshop meeting is the first Monday of the uh, month and the voting meeting is the third Monday. For the public, I think it's critical that the Board of Ed meetings do not directly conflict with Township Committee meetings. I just think that is a slap in the face to the public. So to the extent that you guys don't let that happen, I think that would be appreciated by myself and many others. Um, I also feel like whoever's on shared services might actually want to attend the Township Committee public meeting just to hear what's said, so it kind of is important to not have those overlap. Um, as it relates to potentially combining workshop and voting, for me, I find the workshop meeting extremely informative. I actually really appreciated that every presentation that you guys have gotten to see, I've gotten to see as a member of the public. So I can appreciate why you might want to tease them apart and kind of continue with the model you have now, but I also see why you might want to combine them. I just think as you consider everything, please remember the public. Please remember that we want access to information. We want to see the stuff that's presented. We want the opportunity to digest it and comment on it before you vote on it. If you combine the meetings and we see a presentation or hear of something and then 20 minutes later you're voting on it and we haven't been able to go back to our schools, we haven't been able to speak to anybody, do any research, I think that really kind of eliminates us from the process, which I don't advise you to. Um, as it relates to the committees, if you do move back to kind of a smaller committee format, which I can understand, I can see how that might be a little more effective, again, I think it eliminates public visibility. So if, if a committee meeting happens, as I understand it now, the public isn't made aware that they're happening, we don't know what's being discussed, and we don't have access to what is said or presented. Whereas the workshop meetings right now, we get to see everything. So if there is a move toward the committee format, I really request that you make them available to the public. I don't think you'll get many public attendees, to be honest, but I think the people who want to be there will make a point to get there. Um, and I think that there are many people between the folks who attend you know, the Board of Ed meetings and the PIC committee meetings. Um, you have engaged residents who know a lot about what's going on, I think could be very helpful. So just please make sure that if you go that way, you don't cut the public out of the equation. Um, Again, minutes in that, really, if there are a way to make those meetings more public, if they can be recorded, just like these meetings are, if they can have minutes published, I think that would be fantastic. I think all just opens up the information to the public so that we can be more informed voters when it comes time to, and we can participate in the process and help you out. 
And then the uh, one last thing related to committees. Um, obviously, you're very busy people. I know this is a volunteer position for you. And it was very clear, just even trying to find a date to potentially move one or two meetings, how busy everybody is. With that said, it seems like the list of committees is tremendous. I don't know how you're going to find time in your schedule, honestly, to do all of this. So to the extent that you kind of just pick a couple of big issues and focus on them and nail them out, as opposed to spreading yourselves too thin, potentially, knowing how busy you all are, I just think, as, again, a member of the public, I think we'd rather see a couple of big things get solved as opposed to everything get touched over the course of the next year. And then my only other thing, which I just quickly want to comment on, that's the timer, right? Can I have just like 15 more seconds? Yes. Okay. Um, as it relates to the elections, I don't know much about this, and I wasn't at the December or November meetings to hear any discussion that happened, but myself personally, I actually feel very strongly that the Board of Ed elections should be removed from the general election because you'll get more informed voters. I think people who want to really vote based on knowledge, information, finding out about the candidates, finding out about the issues, they will get themselves to an April election. Everybody goes to the November elections. And honestly, a lot of times they're voting with their eyes closed going down the line, which I think is a huge disservice. So I don't understand, okay, exactly why you might not want to have that combined. I don't know all of the, the details. Again, I just kind of am learning about this now. But I personally think that you'll get more informed votes. And if you have smaller turnout, you'll have more informed voters. Okay, thank you, sorry. Thank you. Oh, if I can just say, um, we've really only added about two committees. We have a pretty active committee model right now. So really only adding, what, two committees? Two. Okay. Yeah. But legislative, and we decided no one personnel. We decided no one personnel. Okay. And policy. And then we combined two committees. So it's really not, you know, that much more. So it's kind of continuing in the same way that it was with um, the committee chairs reporting out to the public you know, at the meetings as we've been doing. So it's not that much of a change. Okay, I get my point, I guess, is if you each have 40 hours a month to dedicate to Board of Ed work, do you pick two or three issues and heavy up your hours there so that things get done as opposed to spreading yourself too thin? That's my only, and again, obviously you guys know more than I do about what you have to do. So it's just kind of a, a, an observation from the public. Right, thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, Trisha McGuire. Congratulations to the new members and welcome back to those who are sworn in again. Um, just to echo what Rachel was speaking about in terms of the uh, overlap or po potential conflict of the township committee meetings being on the same evening as your meetings, to take it just a step further, you know, if you just look at recent uh, history here, it's really important for not only the public but for you guys to know what's happening with the Township Committee, specifically because many issues such as Stevenson Park, shared athletic fields, uh, the issues of development overcrowding, which will affect uh, the need to redistrict, as well as traffic and safety issues, um, are really important for you to be informed of and for them to be informed as well of what's happening with you. And I know that many of you are committing to um, to a space where you are attending one another's meetings, and obviously, you know, if you're meeting on the same evening, it would not uh, allow for that to happen. And uh, uh, just a second comment then on the election day. Thank you very much for moving on that and moving quickly. Um, philosophically, I don't know, you know where I fall on that, but in terms of having the schools closed for yet another election day or another uh, day that is not accounted for at this point, I think is not something that's in the best interest of you know, our town and as a whole. So thank you. Yes, and it costs $40,000 to have a general election. Hello, Sue Griffin again. Um, a couple of things. Uh, first off, in regards to combining the workshop and the voting meeting, I'm going to talk with two different hats here. Um, I've been in your position, and I understand the time and energy that goes into being on your side of the, the board. But I also understand, as a parent, um, you guys have worked so hard over the years to provide transparency to the district. The administration has worked hard, and the parents have worked hard. Um, to build a culture within the district. When we limit the workshop meetings and we combine it to one meeting and the issues are presented and then voted on very quickly, that we risk that transparency. And it's not good for the parents, it's not good for the district, it's not good for the administration, it's not good for you guys. So I'd like you to, you know, a little ounce of prevention, preserve that those relationships because they're important and the, that's what the district is built on. That's that. Um, the second thing I want to talk about 
is I am one of the people who's very much in favor of moving the election back to April for a couple of different reasons. Um, I, I do think it's become very political, and I've spoken to many of you about that. My other reason, and this is really more of my reason, is with the time that's gone on, the 2% cap is becoming more and more undoable. And I see that with the pension assessment liability, with the state aid being taken away from us. I don't see how we're going to be able to continue to operate under that 2% cap. And I'm so glad that you're going with the legislative committee because that needs to be done. And it needs to be done now. Very bad. We need people working for us on the state level. Um, I don't, what I, I think we need to do is get the, 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 everybody in the town involved again in our budget so that they understand what the budget is, so that they can support a budget above 2% if it needs to go there. Please bring back budget ad hoc. Please bring back the community into the building of the budget so that they can defend a budget and support a budget when it goes to a vote because but that's what we're going to need. That, that's my two cents. It's, it, you know, there's politics, and then there's basic finance on operating this district. We've had a lot of money taken away, and we stand to have a lot more taken away because we've talked many, many times about the fiscal cliff. We're over it, and it's not ending. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? To see nobody else come to the mic, um, I'd like to um, have a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed?